Monster from the Deep uh, was based on a 1987 six by eight foot painting I did of a Soviet era uh, nuclear attack submarine, which I entitled Monster from the Deep, the same title as this fetish sculpture, uh, which has been since painted yellow. Uh, it is a monument to the 60s and to the Beatles. This fetish sculpture thing depicts my take, both then and now, on the rise and fall of both the 60s and the Beatles. Fetish, an inanimate object. It's not that I thought then or powers. think now that either the 60s or the Beatles totally sucked. But Yellow Submarine certainly helped hammer a couple of the nails into the coffin of Western civilization, or because it is considered to be inhabited by a spirit, a form of sexual desire in which gratification is linked to an abnormal degree to a particular object, part of the body, or activity, a course of action to which one has an excessive and irrational commitment. Um, she's a fine vessel. She's got some leaks. Um, as to be expected for something so old, but she's going to do the job. She's plowing along. You can see the uh, four Fab Four in their Abbey Road pose with George in the back in denim, and then Paul with bare feet in a cigarette and uh, dressed in black, as is Ringo, who's right in front of him kind of clownishly walking right behind a very earnest, white, outfitted John. Much discussion was done on this album cover, dissecting the meaning and implication of this image. Uh, however, their heads are inside the submarine, their bodies are outside, so they are pretty much the sole um, means of front energy the, at the moment. The bow since the, the reactors are down. The bursting was... Spent are spent the rods are a bit spent and are being repaired at the moment so uh it's foot powered um, the scarlet the crimson pirate the crimson pirate front of which, uh, the the bow of the, the sub is and we're able to bursting with the sea using the air love bubble. i believe that and scene was also psychedelia used in a recent um, Johnny Depp, way, Pirates way, of the way too much LSD. Um, in the the Pirate. That's about all I can tell you right now. This is how it works again, part two. Now, hit the, hit the arrow. Death Ship resulted in a uh, combination of many things. Um, I've always... I've painted acrylic and so constantly cleaning a glass palette, scraping so quickly and um, a friend of mine had given same time me a I bunch of uh, reading four by six pieces of some reason uh, about a synthetic a that composition seemed to have a connection with the sea or the ocean he's a carpenter ships. and he had a bunch of these for some job that he was doing he was going to throw them out a bunch of these blocks and um, rectangles and I started to scrape my rather than throwing the paint off most of them kept it. and these things started to develop so I had lots of Four by six um, mounds. I got stuffed many of them over the years. Years. And Moby Dick was a book that I once read, of course. And uh, trying to but read now, now I didn't have. I don't have the time to go back into it. So I listened to it uh, on tape while I painted. I was also reading uh, Julian Barnes' History of the World, so ten and a half chapters. Read it again, and there's a wonderful scene. There's a loose uh, thread throughout these small short stories. The thread is the sea, and um, particular uh, Shara called uh, Wreck of the Medusa. It's a really great. Uh, short story about that. One night I was going to bed, I was in high school, and um, about to turn off the light, I took my glasses off, and I noticed this little spot on the ceiling, 
that I had never noticed before. Put my glasses on, and damn if it didn't look like a, a little face. So I got a stool, put it on a bed, which was pretty wobbly. And I got up closer to examine and it turned this out little to be, uh, face. Picture of Rasputin giving the Russian Orthodox sign with his hand. And um, it had been taped there, I think, the day my brother left for college. I'd been up there for a, about a year looking down at me every night. I hadn't noticed it. So I took it down and I put it in my wallet and I carried it around with me for and many, then, many years. Um, I made, uh, made it part of the death ship. So I assume that Rasputin's on board. First, the Mekons are an English group. The ship is also influenced by some of their songs. Sometimes I feel like Fletcher Christian, which of course has a nautical uh, theme to it. This is my favorite quote from the whole thing. These South Sea Isles are cold and barren, but this civil war has been good for me. We took drugs and tore our uniforms, gave our captain up to the sea. Here's a greyhound we once had named Fly. She's on the, the bow with her ears on the lookout. I could go on and on. There's more stuff in here, but pretty much. I did a series once on Las Meninas, and this whole pile of debris was sort of art about art, but this is sort of that, that episode in my life in the early 80s, mid-80s, where I did the Las Meninas series, so there's slides of that. Rereading my, one of my favorite books, which is Death Ship by B. Trav. Um, as a kid, I had so gone to Europe a number of times with my family, and ships started to. Uh, uh, Death Ship was uh, so really just a phenomenal book. 1959, and uh, as a teenager in '66, uh, and each time I went over on an uh, ocean liner. are the best builders in all the galaxies, as everyone knows. However, the tower itself was built upside down. Babel. This is a joint effort involving a team from the Army Corps of Engineers and NASA and the Zardonians, the greatest builders in the galaxy. We come across a rather one-sided exchange between a chief engineer from NASA and a Zardonian representative. The NASA guy is clearly peeved. After all, the tower is scheduled to open in two weeks and the Zardonians, obviously, at least to him, have built the thing upside down. It's a one-sided exchange because Zardonians do not have the same emotional makeup as humans. They lack any notions of anxiety, anger, tension, frustration, testiness, annoyance, confrontation, etc. What compounds the agitation of the NASA engineer is the Zardonian's comment, well, 
You can't see it from my house. On either side of each figure is a silver orb translation unit capable of translating up to 40 billion different tongues. More of these units, dubbed Silverados by someone in the core, can be seen in the back of the tower, all lined up, waiting to serve of the expected throngs of diverse visitors. Other units of different sorts are nearby. Poppers or Jiffy Pops, some already popped, can be seen uh, next to the orbs, Silverados. Um, you know those two documents on the server? They yeah. serve Is that where these, these are all uh, They're also next as the translation the needs of stack. some of the more orbs. Wavy gravies. These are tablets that can be ingested for those who communicate a bit near the rear of the towers. Clear testimony to the pure Zardonian engineering genius. But while the tower itself is solid as a diamond, it is in fact comprised of billions of Mesopotamian dust particles, all in an exceedingly rapid state of flux. The drill offers a continuous feed of high speed plasma dust injected into the computer generated tower shape. Everything stays up provided there is this continuous feed. Do we know what the, you know, the I think threshold the is? Yeah. Is that bad? What file size is related to that? We have all that in his life. Something that's sent to have all that. Nine hundred, I would say. Or, back his 10 militants torch to 160 vehicles. Or, if Lugin does this, the problem is destined for U.S. and Allied forces fighting in Afghanistan. In the boldest attack so far on the critical military supplies flying through back his 10 attack. 